Hey, what's the largest problem you're facing right now with your junk removal business? Are you still researching the business and you're looking, hey, where do I get started? Are you not getting enough jobs? Are you slam busy and you're having to turn away work, but you don't know how to take it to the next level, how to hire crews and get more trucks? Are you worried that the crews you have aren't doing a great job or maybe even stealing from you? These are all problems that every junk removal business owner is going to face as they grow. These are problems I've had and I've learned how to solve. The solutions can be found in the complete junk removal business training series. Grow your business, change your life with the JRA Complete Training Series. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. It is Tuesday noon Eastern time. That means it's time to talk a little junk on Let's Talk Junk. Brought to you by Junk Removal Authority, where we help junk removal business owners make more money and live a better life. I'm Lee Godbold, excited to have you here today. Uh, today, we're going to be covering just mainly some general questions and answers and just random stuff. So when we come in, we got a kind of a, uh, an exact topic and outline, a sort of certain direction we're going to go. This time, I encourage all of you guys to throw in some questions. Give us a lot of good questions. Don't care what direction it goes. It can be junk removal related, business related, uh, flying related. I'm a pilot, so I love flying. Could be race car related. Could be any, anything. Whatever you guys want to talk about, feel free to post some uh, messages uh, in our comments uh, section. Questions or comments will be great. Uh, SEO. So we talk about Google ads all the time. SEO is one of the absolute best things long term you can do for your business. And uh, without a shadow of a doubt, our team here at Junk Removal Authority does pretty much a better job than anybody for junk removal SEO. We've ranked more sites across the country than any other company out there. Uh, we'd love to talk to you to figure out if our SEO uh, efforts can, uh, can benefit you long term. It can take a little while to get established, but once it's, uh, once it's set up and going, it's a lot of business comes in from Google and you're not having to pay for it like you do with Google Ads. So last week, uh, we had the pleasure of, or, or I guess it was two weeks ago, had the pleasure of a gentleman by the name of Sam Schick. Uh, that came into town, uh, into the uh, JRA office, was here for two days. If you got to see that interview, uh, it was on YouTube. It's got about a thousand or so views. It's one of the best uh, videos we've put out here recently and a lot of great information. So if you guys had a chance to watch that video, let us know in the comments what you thought about the, uh, the interview and Sam Schick. Um, Sam was a really interesting guy. So if you didn't go through that interview, Sam built the second largest junk removal uh, location ever. Uh, it was It's a 1-800-GOT-JUNK franchise. It's the second largest got junk franchise that was ever built. He started it in 2004. He sold it in 2019. At the time that he sold it, they were 25 trucks, uh, did about $10 million a year or so in revenue. And I'm sure when he sold it, he got a pretty penny for, um, you, you know, when he, when he sold that business. And the neat thing about Sam is uh, Sam wasn't somebody that just went out and invested in a got junk franchise. Like a lot of the got junk franchisees are individuals that go out, they, they, they invest in money into it and they kind of just let the business run. Uh, Sam actually got in there and got out after it. So when he bought in 2004, you know, got junk was not this huge household name at that point. That was prior to the Oprah Winfrey show that they were on. That was prior to Hoarders. That was prior to really them building up this massive brand that they have. Sam got in there, started out with two trucks. Right off the bat, he did two trucks. He said, you know what, I'm not doing this to build a single truck uh, operation. I want to make sure that we can get to our customers fast. I want to ensure that if a truck goes down, that I've got a backup option because I don't want to have a break in between. So right off the bat, he bought two brand new, new vehicles. So the neat thing is he's already thinking big. Like when we work with junk removal companies, if they go through our business package training or they're just looking to get in business and they ask us how many trucks you should start with, yeah, we're in the business of selling trucks, but we tell people one. And um, really, that's all, it's probably a fault. A, a fault. We, we probably shouldn't do that. We probably should say, you know what? Every single one of you should get in there and you should start with two. Why is that? Because you don't plan on having just a one truck operation. Get in there, start with two, fully commit, and then find a way to fill that schedule. So some of the things that Sam talked about that I found was very interesting uh, was how he went about filling that schedule. So when he first got started, he was on the truck, 100% on the truck, uh, with I think I think it was one other guy. So he had this extra truck sitting there. They, they weren't even, they didn't really need two trucks at that point. It was just him and one other guy. And they would actually take the second truck 
to the job site. So you're sitting there thinking about, well, why would you want to rotate this truck around? Uh, why would you want to be transporting this truck all the time when you don't necessarily need it? But what they found was if they brought two trucks, is two trucks together, and you'll see, you'll see Got Junk doing this now in a lot of areas, two trucks running together, or three or four or five or whatever, is much more impressive looking than uh, one truck, and you really, really get noticed. The other thing that happens is they'd roll in these neighborhoods and they'd see, uh, the neighbors would see the trucks at the customers' homes, and we'd see this also, and, and, and neighbors would come and ask about, hey, what's going on, all like this, and they'd actually offer a deal to remove some stuff from the neighbor's house right then and there. So oftentimes by having that second truck, they had enough room to fit that stuff in. The other thing that happened is if you roll up on really large jobs, obviously everything's sitting right there. You can load it all up. You can take it to the landfill. So I, found, I thought that was extremely interesting. Uh, with two trucks as well, you, you really make sure you kind of compact. Uh, you compact the loads in and you're always, if you're going to the dump, you're dumping with one vehicle. So it was very creative. The main reason he did it was from an advertising standpoint to see that truck kind of rotating around. Very, very, very cool trick. The other thing that I was impressed with is, uh, remember, you know, Sam, um, he's 67 years old now, so he started this business 2004, would have been 15 years ago, so he was, you know, in his early 50s when he started, uh, when he started uh, his 1-800 Got Jump franchise, and Got Jump was very, very early on. But he'd get out there in his early 50s, and, and he, they'd put a blue wig on, and he'd go stand out in the middle of traffic in a really, really heavily populated area or heavy trafficked area. And if you think about it, you're driving down the road and you got some crazy guys in a sign, maybe the truck's there, maybe it's not, but a sign with blue wigs on sitting there just waving at traffic. You know, you're going you're gonna to notice what's going on and that's something that he got out there and, uh, and really, really got after it. Of course, that's on top of doing all the regular advertising. I mean, Got Junk does SEO, Got Junk manages their Google Ads campaign, Sam spent on money on Google Ads. Later on, he started in radio. Radio was their, the, they spent more money on radio than anything else. And so he was doing all the things that bring in a lot of business. But one thing that I've noticed is, listen, for the most part in 99% of markets out there, if you, if you approach the junk removal business and you know what works and you advertise where you need to and you follow the systems that need to be followed, uh, you're, you're going to build a great company. But the guys that really build a tremendous company are the ones that take it that next step, that stand out in the middle of traffic or get their guys to stand out in the middle of traffic. Uh, that, that maybe do rate, move into radio advertisements, that do creative things to get exposure. Those are the guys that really, really get a lot of customers and really, really grow. So it was an excellent interview with Sam uh, last week. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you do. Matt, we got any questions or anything coming in through here? So guys, if y'all have any questions at all, just make sure you uh, post them in, in the comments. Can be about anything. We are a wide open show today. So just let us know, uh, let us know what kind of stuff you've got on your mind. One of the things that I really uh, gained from, from Sam, and this is something that we do, he kind of took it to the next level though, is the uh, individuals that uh, work for you, your team. I was recently on Facebook, uh, this is three, four days ago, I was reading uh, through a group post and somebody posted on there, they're like, I am done with employees. I don't want any more employees. I can't find them. They don't show up. They quit, they complain, and it was a, you know, they don't do this right or this right, whatever. It was a million different issues this individual had. He said, I'm done. I'm just going to do all the jobs on my own. So what he doesn't realize, <clears throat> what many business owners don't realize, is as you grow, your job is not for you yourself to go out into the field and do the actual work. Your job becomes... Uh, building hiring, so hiring becomes nonstop. If you want to build a 25 truck operation or even just a three or four truck operation or, or maybe even a two truck operation, you're literally out there hiring nonstop. It's, this isn't a, all right, we're going to open up hiring and then we're going to turn hiring off. Not in this day and age anyway, maybe 10 years ago it was. But in this day and age, it's, all right, we're going to open up hiring and we're never going to turn hiring off. So in Indeed, we're going to spend $50 a day Every single day for the next year, next five years, next 10 years, that's an expense. And every single week, or maybe multiple times a week, we're going to be conducting interviews. That never stops. And you're probably like, well, hell, I hate giving interviews. And half the time I set up interviews and they don't show. 
and they're just just bad. It's just a huge waste of my time. I spend hours every single week uh, doing interviews, and, and they don't show. Um, if you one, if you look at it as something you have to do every single week, you're not going to have that that negative as much of a negative outlook. It just becomes something that you have to do. You got to put underwear on them every day. You got to uh, interview people every single week. And if you approach it like that, then it becomes less about, hey, I, I just, I'm dreading doing this because it's normal. There's things that you do on your normal basis every single day, normally, that you don't really enjoy doing. Those of you that, com that commute, and I love you guys, are you, you know, with junk removal business, all you do is, is, uh, is you drive to different job sites. But for those of you that are looking to get in the junk removal business, maybe you got a uh, regular job now, and you commute into work 30, 45 minutes. We got we got people that work here at Jerry's office commute 45 minutes an hour sometimes to get in here. And that seems like an extremely long period of time, but they do it every single day, so they're just used to it. And it's the same sort of thing on the interview. However, there's something that uh, we've started doing. We're staffing up our truck body business right now. And we're actually having pretty good luck with it. We located, we were smart. We located our truck body uh, business in an economically deprived area. Uh, where you have a lot of people that have the welding talents, the painting talents and all that we need. And many of these people are having to commute 45 minutes or an hour into Raleigh. Well, instead we went to where they live. Uh, we're probably gonna wind up maybe getting a little bit of tax benefits off of it. But also the main thing is, is we went to where the people are that can do the work that we need to do. So we're taking people from, from, these, from, from big companies at this point as we, as we grow that business. So the goal in that truck body business is uh, we've got a, got a new building coming in uh, it probably will be in in about a month, get installed, set up, hopefully we're being used to it. It's going to more than double our, uh, our, the size of our current building now. So extremely nice building. It's going to give us two production lines, just building junk trucks down both lines. Hopefully we can turn out uh, 15, 20 of these things a month and get these wait times shrunk down to uh, three weeks if you want a custom truck or actually have, if you want a black truck, actually have not, and not custom, we don't sell custom trucks but have a uh, black truck in stock, or if you want a custom color, uh, three weeks out. That's our goal, and that within the next nine months, I expect to have achieved that. So what we're doing though, something we learned from Sam, when we're doing these interviews, and like I said, we're hiring a lot of people. When we're doing these interviews, we're doing group interviews. So I'm not sitting there setting up an interview, uh, setting up six interviews in a day. I'm interviewing six people at one time, which can be a lot of fun. So instead of the same old interview questions you ask back and forth, you get people in the same room and you, you know, in the case of hiring for truck body stuff, the very first thing they do, they walk in, they put their welding helmet on and we've got some stuff set up. Say, hey, you run, you know, run a vertical weld, run a horizontal weld. Let's take a look at your weld and see how it is. Um, so if they can weld, then the next thing is, is all right, now we're going to sit them down and we're going to ask them some questions. And the questions could be anything about, you know, around, you know, hey, tell us what other kind of places, uh, have you worked in the past? What was your favorite job, least favorite job? What do you need in a manager to, to really excel? What's the worst boss you ever had? What's the best boss you ever had? What's the neatest thing you've ever welded? So, uh, and then you can go into some questions if you want, you know, the, the, you can really have a lot of fun, which is, hey, of these six people in this room, if you were me, which one would you hire? And you figure out, you know, do they say themselves or do they find somebody else, in, you know, in there? So what, what occurs in these group interviews is the cream really rises to the top. So in these group interviews, you can figure out, you know, who are my, who are the guys that are going to get along with other people? Who are the ones that actually have a vision and an idea of the direction they want to go in their life? And who are the ones that are just applying for this job because it's just a job? They got no idea what they're going to do. They have no passion whatsoever. People, maybe they don't want to be a junk removal employee for their entire life. Most probably don't. But if you find somebody that knows they don't necessarily want to be a junk removal employee their entire life. They know they, they, they've, they, they've got pride in what they do. And um, they know they're going somewhere and they're learning, they're gonna improve. It's not just any old other job. And maybe that means they leave in two or three years. Those are gonna be your best guys. The group interviews really allow those outgoing guys, the guys with a good personality to really uh, kind of, again, the cream rises to the top. Guys, if you got any questions, just uh, let us know. Post in the, uh, in the comments section. Love to hear what you guys have to say. Um, we will be wrapping up this show probably in about the next five to 10 minutes. So make sure that you get your questions in if you've got anything. Radio ads. Again, we're jumping around today. So another interesting thing when speaking with Sam, because we've never done radio. We've thought, we've, 
we've had probably the, the most stubborn salesperson I've ever encountered uh, has been contacting us about once a month for the past six years about radio because we flirted with radio a few times. He came in and he gave us some ad rates and some times that would show and all that kind of stuff and we just never really pulled the trigger. So radio later on, I know you guys, if you guys are in markets where Got Junk is, they use radio nonstop. I mean, you hear, I hear radio, there's at least six different channels that I hear Brian Scudamore coming on the channel talking about, you know, making junk disappear and giving you a stress-free life and putting a smile on your face and it's magic and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Which is actually an interesting story. If you guys haven't read the WTF book, uh, which in Got Junk Culture, I guess, stands for willing to fail. Uh, for everybody else, I guess it has a different meaning. But uh, but the, the, the WTF book was written by Brian Scudamore a few years ago. Um, it's got a few neat things in it uh, and from a business standpoint. Those of you in the junk removal field, though, listen, that's the, that's the guy that set, that, that, that set the course for this entire industry. You know, I'm on here you know, right now, and, and, and somebody else would have figured it out, but he was the first guy to figure out you can professionalize junk removal and you can charge pretty high rates for it, and people will pay it you know, seven days a week. So anyway, you should read his book. And in the book, they talked about this uh, on this radio uh, ad campaign that they came up with. They found some guy, I think he's in Texas. This is an interesting guy. They call him the Wizard of Ads. And this, uh, this individual has like a compound in Texas. And uh, one, you can't ever reach him on the phone. He doesn't talk on the phone. Uh, the second thing is, is I don't even think he responds to email. He has like one assistant that takes care of all his correspondence. The third thing, and the most interesting uh, of it, is you show he you come to him. You bring your entire executive team to him. He doesn't. He's going to ask you some pointed questions. He does not want your input on what you want in an ad campaign. And he tells you, listen, here's the deal: before you show up on site, before you come into my compound, I want to deposit a check for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's going to hit the bank, and you're not getting that money back. And when you get here, I'm going to give you one ad campaign and there's no feedback, no revisions, whatever. You're either going to take it or you're going to leave it. And I'm going to keep your 250 k So uh, honestly, this is a very confident individual. It, for him, Brian, to have done business with this guy, this must have been a guy that uh, had a lot of, has a lot of proven success. And he does. If you look, there's a lot of major ad campaigns you've heard about. But can you imagine saying, you know, I got to cut this guy a 250K check. I have no input in what I'm getting at all. No changes. Uh, I can't even talk to him on the phone until I show up. So they took that, that leap. And this is something that, uh, now listen, you can get screwed doing this too. You got to do your research. But, you know, that, 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 a, lot, a lot of times that leap, that, 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 uh, that, that jumping, that going all in, that commitment, a lot of times that's actually what allows business owners to be successful. Those of you that, that, that wafer back and forth, and I was as guilty of it as anybody years ago. Those of you that wafer back and forth on should I do this or, or not or whatever, do your research, figure out how you're gonna do it. If you're gonna do it, do it, and then just move on. And, and don't look back and commit. When you go and you work with somebody, you commit to working with them until they are not holding up their end of the bargain. If they're willing to work with you, if they're willing to take your feedback, you know, take some feedback and figure out what's working and what's not, then, uh, you, you stick with that individual. Now, in the case of the radio man, you didn't have an op much of an option because he's, he was so established. But they went with it. They paid him the 250 k They came up, I think the original one was the, the magic deal. Um, uh, they, they've had a few revisions and campaign since. The other odd thing about that Wizard of Ads, and I learned this from Sam, I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think Brian, uh, Brian covered it in his book, is with that with the Wizard of Az, if you he, they tell you if you ever leave me, if you ever stop using me, you can never work with me again. So, are you going to want a chance leaving that guy? I, I thought I thought that again. That that guy he knows what he has. I'm very confident. He doesn't care if you don't work with him or not, and that just makes people want to go go work with them. But yeah, if, if you leave him, you can't ever work with him again. So I, I found thought thought that was very interesting. Again, that was in that WTF book. Uh, by Brian Scudamore, was at least maybe two, three years ago. Uh, it's a good read if you're in the junk removal business. Uh, it's a quick read. So those of you that are decently fast readers, uh, you'll you'll knock that out in just a day or two, uh, you know, a few hours. Uh, you can have uh, have read that book. What we got? All right, we got a question from Charles V. He says, "What is the timeline looking like to have a new truck built for buyers? 
Do you anticipate this time frame to increase or decrease towards the last quarter of the year? Right now, it's about 10 to 12 weeks, which is long. Uh, within the next six months, I'd like to have that down to four to six weeks. Uh, within nine months, I'd like to have that down to uh, three weeks. And then actually within 12 months, we actually want to have a handful of trucks in stock. Now they're gonna be a painted black. Uh, you're gonna call us up and you say, hey, you know, I want a truck. We'll send it your way and then, uh, or, or you can wrap it. So we, we are getting a, uh, a printer. We're not getting it yet. Um, uh, where right now we work with the local company and we come up with the design, we'll get your graphics on there and all like that. We're actually gonna be purchasing a printer where all the trucks that come through here, we can, you know, wrap the, uh, wrap, the wrap uh, into it. But, you know, we'll send it on your way. And then, you know, if you're getting graphics within a few days, uh, once financing has been approved, you should have a truck. Um, but to answer your questions, by the end of the year, we'd like to have that down to four to six weeks. Uh, nine months, get it down to about three weeks. And then uh, 12 months, actually have some trucks in stock. If you want a custom color, it'd still be that three-week time frame. That's that new building. That's us uh, ramping up, adding more people. All we're selling is junk trucks. That's it. So we're gonna, what's going to be pretty neat is over time, Right now we're pretty we're price competitive. We've got a price that's set at a, you know, there's some a few few companies out there that might do one a little bit cheaper. I don't think there's good. There's a few there's several a lot of companies out there that do it for more. As we do more of these trucks and as we're able to specialize more, we're actually able to bring this price down too. So we're gonna have lower wait times, lower price, and all we're building is drunk trucks. So you're gonna get a consistent product. And the neat thing is also is we're talking to people and we're figuring out. There's a guy down in Florida that's giving us some feedback, and he's saying, hey, you know, what if you do this? And it's a pretty dang on good idea. So we're actually wrapping that into some of the, the trucks we'll be releasing here soon. Constantly looking at revisions. So if you guys are interested though, and you want one relatively soon, you're still two, three months out, just uh, contact us at junkremovaltrucksforsale.com. What else we got? Next, Next question comes, comes from Jesus, Jesus Paid, Paid It All. All. What, what advice can you give on creating a business name? name? It, it seems like almost everything is already taken. taken. Yeah, I mean, back when we created Junk Doctors 10 years ago, it seemed like everything was taken too. So just you're just going to have to get create a list of 100 names, find some friends, family members, tell them, hey, I'll get, you know, just help me pick out a name on this business and uh, just kind of see what you come up with. Now, the other part of this is, are you looking to go national? Are you looking to expand nationally? Or are you just going to stay in your local region? If you're going to stay in your local region, find something related to your area. Uh, just had a guy down in uh, Dallas, Texas, right outside of Dallas, uh, opened up Mean Green Junk Removal because the University of North Texas, their, their nickname is Mean Green. They're, they're the Mean Green team or whatever. So Mean Green Junk Removal, everything's branded Mean Green. They're looking at sponsoring the local college. Um, they've got, they'll actually, sounds like they're actually going to be putting out a YouTube channel too, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but that's, uh, that's, that's Tom Vazilowski. Um, down there in uh, in Dallas, Texas area, moved just moved there. So he was a uh, corporate pilot. Uh, flew some in Alaska, flew some kind of all over the country. Uh, he, he's lived up in Virginia. He actually found the business because we'd sold a truck to a guy that lived a little bit down the road from him. He was parked in his driveway. He asked him. He, he got to asking questions about the truck, and the guy put him onto our channel, the JRA channel. He said, "Hey, if you guys are, if you're interested in the business, look into JRA." So he knew he was moving down to Texas, and um, he, uh, he moved down there, and he opened up Mean Green Junk Removal. That's related to his area. So the nice thing, if it's related to your area, is one, you're going to get, people are going to know exactly where you service. It's cool. People like dealing with, you know, local companies. Around here in North Carolina, if you opened up Tar Heel Junk Removal, you know, you're going to have, uh, have some, some people that are, are pretty interested in working with you just because of the UNC Tar Heels. Now, if you're a Duke Blue Devil fan or if you're an NC State Wolfpack fan, you're probably less likely to want to work with that company, but you know, you're going to get some, uh, definitely some name recognition behind you. Trademarking. Um, you, don't, you can use a name of a company that is located in another area if they haven't federally trade, trademarked it. So if you're not in their area, they're out of your state, then, and you want to use the same name they're using and they have not federally trademarked it, then you, you can go and you can do that. If they federally trademarked it, you're going to want to avoid it. Now, how do you find out it's been federally trademarked? Go on trademarkia.com or the U.S. Patent Trade and Trademark Office website and just do a search and figure out if the name's been uh, taken. The other thing you might want to do is you might want to look to see if, there's some, if there are some names out there, uh, if the companies look like they're expanding. That might be uh, something you have to deal with in the future. But hey, if they haven't filed for a trademark and they don't have a trademark yet, 
it's uh, it, it, you know it's kind of fair you know fair game at that point. Uh, now, if they if you decide then you want to federally trademark, you actually have to be in multiple states to federal to, to for a federal trademark to go through. So uh, anyway, you can look at existing names, you can come up with other lists, and just see what you hit on. But it's not you don't have to 100% have an original name if you find a company that's been open for a while in one area, it doesn't look like they're expanding, they have no federal trademark, you can have that same name in your area. Any, Any other questions? questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How, how much ad spend, spend per, per booked, booked truck? truck? Huh, never thought about it like that. All right, let's, let's think about this. So, 30,000 revenue. Um, you, you're roughly, uh, if you're talking about Google ad spend, you can generally see sometime around four to six X return after the campaign's been established, so after several months. So it's a modest return. Uh, and your truck, as you've been open longer, you're gonna get more repeat business. So a lot of the value in a, in, from Google Ads is actually in the long term, uh, the lifetime value of the client. So you get somebody in, you do a great job for them, they're gonna refer others to you, they're gonna leave online reviews, which is gonna allow more people to select you, and they're gonna do repeat business. And we, we figure we're gonna see customers about once every two years on average. Now, sometimes we never see a customer again. They move out of the area or they die. Um, other times, uh, you know, we might see somebody multiple times every single year, but it averages to about once every two years. By about year four or five, probably 40% of your customers are actually going to be a repeat. So that's a lot of the value. So that, that answer isn't quite, it, a lot of that depends on what uh, stage of the business that you're in. In some areas, you know, one truck can do $35,000 a month. And in some areas, you might be able to get $35,000 a month of business just from Google Ads. Uh, you're gonna be spending in that case, a quick little bit of math here, what, seven, seven about 7,000, 7,000 a month, something like that as a general rule, somewhere in that range to fill the schedule up. In some areas, a well-run Google Ads campaign, there's just not enough people, not enough people searching in your area to spend that much. So that's when you look at Home Advisor, you look at going, <laughs> waving at traffic like Sam did. Uh, you know, you look at uh, flyers, yard signs. You know, yard signs, uh, another great way to get business for, for name exposure and everything like that. And you just, you have several different avenues to gain to uh, gain business. There's not a specific formula for how much Google ads to get a certain amount of business. It varies by area and how long you've been in business though. How much, or how are you guys prepping for the slow seasons coming up? Well, the slow season's actually one of the busier times for us uh, because uh, that, that's the time that we take, we, we take some, try and take some equipment down, some of it down, and, and refurb it. So repaint it, uh, go through it, and, uh, change out grease fittings. I mean, we, we're greasing them all the time, but change out grease fittings, repack seals, do brake jobs. You know, we try and knock out the brakes once a year on these trucks. Uh, and we try and consolidate that as much as we can during the slow season, which in North Carolina is normally January and February. We only have like two months of slow season. And honestly, it's not that slow. So with Junk Doctors, if Junk Doctors does, say in the busy month, we do $300,000, that means in January and February, we're still gonna be in that 150 to 200 range. And uh, that's still pretty busy. So, but the nice thing is, is we have several trucks that are down, we can work on them. Some of our guys take some vacations at that point, they'll get some overtime and all throughout the summer, especially now we're paying out overtime like crazy because there's such a shortage on team members. Um, but, uh, that, you know, that's, uh, we, we also, we look towards the end of the year uh, with Section 179 depreciation. You know, how much money did we make this year? We want to max out. I think it's, uh, in the past, it's been 250 k You could buy an equipment. You could write it off in one year. As long as we think we're going to need, you know, those trucks next year, you know, we'll go out, we'll buy three, four trucks um, and kind of maybe turn that fleet over some and just be ready for expansion next year and try and knock some of that, uh, that taxable income down. The other part is those, uh, you know, especially when we're smaller, we don't worry about it as much now because we've built up enough cash reserves over the years. But, you know, we'd want to become, uh, you know, rolling late August, you start building that bank account up to get through the, the slower periods because we want to make sure we, our guys keep, can keep working. We keep getting them hours. So even when we slow down, they're not going to get as many hours during the summer. But, you know, we're going to have them putting out yard signs, door hanger flyers, doing jobs cleaning trucks, you know, we're gonna have them doing things so they continue to get hours. That way we have them come busy season the next year. So uh, we don't, again, we're, we're, we're probably actually busier in, in terms of uh, what the owner, 
not me myself anymore, but Christian, you know, Christian's got a lot going on during those winter months, getting trucks scheduled for maintenance and all that kind of stuff. Um, the, the, we were talking about Sam earlier. Sam built the second largest 1-800-GOT junk franchise. Uh, I believe the largest is Toronto. And that Toronto franchise does about 20 million a year Canadian dollars. I think the conversion rate on that is something like 13 or 14 million US dollars. And my understanding, I've never spoken with these guys, but my understanding is those guys uh, essentially take about eight months of the year off, the owners. They don't do anything for eight months for the most part, and they get very, very active for the four months in the, of the Toronto slower season, which I'm gonna guess is November, November, December, January, probably November through uh, March, or maybe December through March, somewhere in that range. It's about probably about four months of a slow season uh, for them, and that's when they get in there, they get new trucks, they really work on training very heavily, uh, they work on their ad campaigns for the upcoming year. They don't stop advertising. A lot of guys stop advertising in the slow season. If anything, you increase advertising in the slow season. You've got capacity. You've got trucks that aren't being worked. Spend more and keep them busy. So what if you just break even on it? You're keeping your trucks busy. You're getting more people in your funnel. That's going to turn into more business later on. Great question, by the way. Uh, a lot of people aren't even thinking about slow season right now. Guys, slow season, just around the corner. We're, getting, we're, into busy, we're right in the middle of busy season right now. You're making money, a ton of money. Uh, you've seen your bank account grow. You need to take some of that money right now. I would up your advertising spend now. I'd get more trucks, get more people, get this thing, get this thing rolling good. Uh, but don't go out necessarily and buy you a brand new personal truck until you got plenty of money. You know, don't go out and buy yourself a brand new personal vehicle and, and saddle yourself with that payment. Uh, you might not want to go out and get a do a huge vacation quite yet. So until you're established. Once you're established, go off and do all that stuff. That's the reason you build up a business. That's one of the reasons you build up a business. Build up a business that can run without you, that gives you a lot of that extra income. I just bought, I mean, it's not crazy, but I mean, I, I went out and I got a F-150 Limited, one of the brand new 2021s, F-150 Limited trucks. I think it was a 71000 it's like a $73,000 truck. I, we got it for seventy one because we got it from the same company that we work with getting a lot of their chassis. We probably sold, well, I was probably, our. uh, Truck Bodies was probably their top salesperson last year um, in terms of moving trucks in the commercial division anyway We because we, we, we moved a bunch of their chassis last year. So they gave me a little bit of a break on the truck body, but on the truck itself. But guys, I mean, five years ago, my, I was driving a 1991 Chevy pickup truck. I had a business that was doing five years ago, probably a million and a half a year and uh, you know, making good money and all like that. But I was driving around a $2,500 pickup truck. So once it got to the point it, it was spitting off a lot more money, that's when I went out and I got a 16 F-150 and I, I was happy with it. And then the Ford came out and they snookered me because they got they released this brand new interior with this massive 12 inch screen. I think it's just insane. It reminds you of a Tesla. It's massive 12 inch screen. And then I was like, all right, and, and they had, uh, they had uh, just some, you know, cooled seats, which my last truck had cooled seats too, but just the entire layout, the digital dash, just everything about it was just super, super classy looking. So I figured, you know what, I'm gonna go get a Lariat. So then Ford got me again, because then I learned with the Lariat, all you can get, I think, is, a, is the 400 horsepower engine. Uh, that's all you can do. And with the Lariat, 400 horsepower, the, uh, the King Ranch was 400, this is the gas engine. Uh, the Platinum was 400. You had to jump all the way to the Limited, and if we got the Limited, you could get the Raptor engine, which is 450 horsepower. So I went out, and instead of getting the Lariat, which I intended to get, I got, I got, the, uh, I got the Limited just for that extra 450, or that extra 50 horsepower. And I'll tell you what, that's, uh, that is a, that's a quick vehicle. So uh, it's an excellent vehicle, but it took me a while to get to that. When you're going into winter, uh, keep growing through the, the busy season, have money so you can spend more on advertising through winter, and that's gonna kick you off where you're gonna be in a good position come next busy season also. What else we got? All right, what, what different things are you, are you looking at to see if starting a local junk business removal business works? works? Example, population, population size, competition, 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 et cetera. Matt, we did, uh, by, the, by the way, uh, great job with uh, Mad Matt Mary running this, uh, this show every single Tuesday. Matt, we did a video probably a year ago on evaluating the junk removal market. Let's post that in the link too, because I think that'll be really beneficial. Um, you know, one of the main things we're looking for, yeah, population size is part of it. Now, people ask me all the time, what population number do you want to see? You know, if you're in an area that's got a population of 250,000, you can probably build, uh, 
you know, a decent one or two, two truck operation if you really, really cover that area pretty, uh, pretty thoroughly, maybe a bit more. Uh, but it's not just population size, you wanna look at income. So are you in an area that's maybe a little bit above average, average income? maybe has above average compared to the U.S. in terms of uh, white collar jobs because most of your customers are going to be white collar. A good percent, uh, the majority will be female, um, somewhere around a 60-40 split, give or take, and it will be female. And they're also mainly going to be, it's, it's mainly going to be white collar. So you're looking into that. The other thing that we do is we get on Google Trends and we figure out, you know, in my area, are people doing internet searches for junk removal? That's, uh, that, that, that's one area we look at. We look at what the local trash route is doing. Now this isn't a determining factor, but is the local trash route, like in Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina, you can take your, your entire house of stuff, put it out on the curb, they're gonna come by and pick it up for, and they're not gonna charge you for that pickup. All, everything, everything can be sitting right at the curb. So that might be three pickup truck, uh, not pickup truck, that might be three truckloads worth of stuff. That might be 45 yards and they're not gonna charge you. So that, that's a negative detractor. But what we found is a lot of times people don't want to take the effort to take the stuff outside. They don't want their neighbors looking through all their stuff and uh, they don't want to wait on the truck to come. And some people just don't even know that the city does that either. So we, we do, we've got a four truck operation in Charlotte now. So it, um, you've been, been there about three years, got four trucks there. So it, we've built up a good business there even with that, but Charlotte is a lot of white collar jobs, second largest banking industry uh, in the country behind New York City. Uh, Bank of America is headquartered out of there. Um, it's, uh, so, so that's one thing that you'll, you'll really look at. There's several different vari variables as well. You know, you wanna evaluate your landfill situation. Uh, you know, it, what are, what are disposal fees like? Uh, what kind of stuff do they take? So, you know, how close are landfills to you? What kind of permits are required? There's some areas that try, you know, if you're gonna rent dumpsters, there's some areas out there that to rent dumpsters, there's literally like just one company in that area that you can actually rent, that has a franchise agreement with the city and don't you know there's some underhand payments going on there if only one company can, can do it in the area, but you can't rent out dumpsters. So that's the kind of research you need to do. In terms of business though, if you've got at least 250,000 people in the area, a million's awesome. If you hit a million, you can, you can build a successful business just about anywhere, maybe not Albuquerque, New Mexico, but other than that, uh, pretty much any other area with a decent population, you can really, uh, really get a good sized uh, business out of it. Uh, but check out that video. I think you'll find that to be very helpful because we actually not only did we tell you the exact formula that we use to find if a company's going to be can potentially be successful, uh, we actually do some examples in that video. Uh, furthermore, if you like, would like to, I think it's six hundred dollars is what we're charging for a market evaluation. We'll actually get in there and do some of the work for you. Now it's not a full on evaluation like you might hire a so, you know, it's a company that might charge you 10 grand to do, but at $600, we can give you a pretty good idea of what we think of the market. And we've told some people before, hey, this might be a challenging market. So, uh, you know, we'll shoot you straight. Any other comments, Any comments questions? questions? Do you think having all your service you offer in your business, what do you think about having all the services you offer in your business name? Like Ed, Big Dogs, Hauling, and Junk Removal. I like putting Junk Removal in your business name. Uh, that's something that we didn't know when we started Junk Doctors. It's, junk Doctors is just Junk Doctors. From a website standpoint, by adding in junk removal, you've got some extra SEO boost going on there. So Junk Doctors, Junk Removal, or, or Ed's Junk Removal and all like that is good to have junk removal in your name just so much or just for the reason of uh, search engine optimization and better quality scores on your Google Ads. We got... What are your thoughts on making your own dumpster bags? We are able to pick them up with our hook lift. Fit three in one 10 yard can. Explored it. I think it's a good option if you can find a way to let people know about it. The thing with the, the waste management bagsters is people can go to Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever, order them online, and they show up and, and they're established. You know, people know about waste management bagsters. So the difficult thing is for a junk removal business to be able to do it 
it's, it's getting exposure, it's getting people to choose your Baxter without choosing your Baxter and taking away from junk removal. What I mean by that is uh, somebody might contact you wanting junk removal, they see you have a Baxter option and they actually wind up purchasing the Baxter rather than spending the money on the more expensive and more profitable for you junk removal service. So if you're not careful, you can kind of cannibalize your business a little bit. Now on the other end, uh, if that's what people want, you're providing them the service that they want which is good. Ultimately, uh, businesses should look at what does the consumer, what's best for the consumer. Uh, it, you might argue though that in a, many situations, Baxters aren't best. The best situation for them is to let a company go in there, take the stuff out, load the truck and be done with it. But if they're doing a home remodeling project, a Baxter could work. So if you're going to do it, I think you present it in a way, I don't know if you advertise it, uh, as a rental service. I think it's a low enough profit margin. Many, and I'm assuming you're, gonna, you're planning on shipping them the bag, but I think it's a low enough profit margin because normally you're not gonna charge a tremendous amount for it. You'd have to do a high volume to make a lot of money. I think what I would look at is if somebody contacts you for junk removal and all, and they, then you then determine that what they really need is a dumpster rental, well, you can then at, uh, offer them that, that Baxter option. That's the reason we've never done it, is because I think to, to really be extremely successful with it and move a lot of them, it's almost its very own business and it'll kind of distract some from, from junk removal. But it's a good idea. I mean, there's some validity to it for sure. That was the last one. All right, guys. Well, appreciate everybody joining us today on Let's Talk Junk, 12 noon Eastern time, every single Tuesday. Hope everybody had a wonderful Memorial Day. If you want to get your website to rank well organically, to not have to pay Google for every single click, to do a search on your business name and see yourself multiple pages on that front page, or, or not business name, but keyword, Check out our SEO service. It is not instantaneous. You'll see some in, within six months, you'll begin some increased business. Uh, within a couple years, you're probably gonna see yourself potentially up on that front page, maybe sooner, maybe a little later. But once you reach that, it's almost an unlimited ROI. We said four to six X for Google Ads. SEO, once you get ranking, uh, 50, over 50% 50 of your business can come from it and uh, it's almost an unlimited ROI at that point. So check it out, we'd be happy to do it, junkremovalauthority.com or junkra.com if you don't feel like typing all that out. 919-617-1975. I am Lee Godbold with Junk Removal Authority where we help junk removal business owners make more money and live a better life. We'll catch you next week. Junk Removal Business Owners, the complete training series for the junk removal industry is out. Learn how to get more customers, grow faster, build an amazing team, get off the truck, and make more money. Check it out.